Hi there, my name is Josh. I am the pastor of Connection and Formation at the Heart. And I want to welcome you to another study session. Over the next four weeks, we're going to be talking about Advent. And maybe that term is familiar to you. Maybe it's something you celebrate yourself. Maybe it's something that you've seen celebrated, just depending on your faith background. For others, perhaps it's something new and something that you're not really sure about, or maybe you've heard a little bit about, but you're not exactly sure all the elements or aspects to it. I know for me, I grew up with Advent and it was something that uh, the, the true meaning of it was a little bit lost on me. I know that we did all the things, kind of the symbolic and ritualistic things that went along with it, like lighting a candle, depending on the week that we were in. I noticed that the colors of the banners in our sanctuary and even the colors of the stoles that the pastors wore changed color to this lavender color. I know that we did a, a part in the service where we would do a call and response prayer and we would, like I said, light a candle depending on the week that we were in. But I, I didn't really understand or know exactly what Advent was all about. And it's been fun to go back and to look at it again and to be reminded of exactly what Advent is and why it's important for us to maybe pause and take time to really focus in on what it's inviting us into. It's an opportunity for us to set aside the things that have happened over the course of the last year and really focus in on these elements of hope, faith, joy, and peace. To really be intentional in our waiting, which Advent is Latin for waiting or coming even, it's an, a time for us to be waiting, but it's time for us to be eagerly anticipating what is yet to come. And so I think an aspect of Advent that might get a lost along the way is that it not only celebrates the coming celebration of Christ's birth, but it also celebrates the promise of Christ's return. And so we get to be in this cool in-between area where we both get to celebrate what has already transpired, the birth, the life, death, and resur resurrection of Christ. And also we can celebrate or look forward to or prepare for what is yet to come, which is Christ's promise of his return and for there to be a new heaven and a new earth that comes as a result of that. So it's Interesting that Advent would come at this time of year. It's not an accident by any means. It's very strategic and in some very practical ways. One is we're coming to the end of a calendar year. And like I said, maybe this is an opportunity for us to set aside the things that have transpired over the last 11 months and really kind of reorient ourselves, reorient our hearts and our minds to what it means to be a follower of Christ, not to disregard or ignore what has happened over the course of the last year, but really to pause and to let those things be while we take the opportunity to slow down and to um, really embrace this idea of waiting, but waiting in a way that is in anticipation. Kind of like you're waiting in the line at Comeback Shack to get one of those 40 flavors of, uh, of milkshakes rather than the waiting that you might have at the DMV uh, holding that number and just waiting to come face to face with somebody to talk through how to get a new driver's license or something. It's a very different posture that we take in that waiting. And that's why we focus in on each of these aspects of our faith. It's so that we can really um, reflect and explore and discover things that maybe we had let, let go of, maybe things that we had forgotten, 
maybe things that we have ignored along the way. And so again, this is an opportunity for us to reorient. It's also symbolic in that we use candles and candles are representative of Christ and Christ being the light of the world. But also too, we are at that point in the year, at least in the Northern hemisphere, where days are getting shorter and nights are getting longer. So in a sense, this is the darkest time of the year as we lead up to the winter solstice. And so the, the candlelight, as we get closer to the celebration of Christ's birth, the candlelight gets brighter and brighter. Again, symbolic of what Christ's birth means for us. So those are all aspects of the ritual of Advent and why this is an important time of year for us. But what I want to do is spend a little bit more time talking about these different aspects of Advent. And so today I'm going to focus in on the idea of hope. And so for you and I, hope can be a difficult concept to grasp. At least I know it is for me. Oftentimes I find myself too much influenced and impacted by the things that are swirling all around me, the circumstances that I find myself in, all the things that are transpiring in the world as I see it, as I experience it. And those things too often dictate my level of hope. And what I mean by that is when things are going great, I couldn't be more hopeful. The glass couldn't be more full. I couldn't be more anticipatory of what is yet to come and really believing the very best and that things couldn't get better. And when things go bad or when things are bad, it feels like the world is just caving in on me and that things are too much and I can't, can't go one more minute without just feeling like this utter kind of weight and despair in my heart and I struggle to smile and to kind of get through the day. And we all have things that transpire over the course of a day, a week, a month, even a year that can feel very burdensome, can feel very, um, very tragic. And, and they are, these are difficult things, you know, things from losing your job to health crises to uh, you name it, any number of things, loss, grief, um, going through um, chemotherapy, you know, whatever it might be, those are all very real things. And, and like I said, we, sh we can't ignore them, nor should we. But this is a time where we can start to really look at and discover and determine what is it that we are drawing our hope from. Are we allowing the things around us, the, the things that we're experiencing day to day to determine our hope? Are we allowing the ups and the downs of our lives to determine where we're at? And that like the ups and downs of our life, our hope is up and it's down and it's up and it's down. And that's human nature, that's to be expected. but. What I would suggest, and it's nothing new, but it's a reminder for me and maybe for you as well, is that our hope can be constant because it doesn't have to be reliant on the things that are happening around us, the things that are happening to us. Our hope is found in Christ alone. It is found in the person of Christ. Think of that, the person of Christ. Have you placed your hope in Christ himself? Or is the idea of Christ something that you have found that you've placed most of your hope in? And by that, I mean, you, we can have faith in Christ, but if our hope is in Christ and the things that he does for us alone, then it can feel like the things that are happening to us on a day-to-day -day basis are somehow related to that, as opposed to recognizing that God through Jesus is a rock. He is faithful. He is never changing. He is 
ever present. He is, um, he is our foundation and that it is not about the things, but about Christ himself that we can gain our, our confidence and our strength from. And we know that he does not change even though we might in the circumstances around us might. So again, through Christ alone, that's where we find our hope. And we read these things throughout the Bible, these reminders in Psalm 39, the psalmist is crying out. And what's interesting about this is that Psalm, the Psalms were written before Christ. And so there was that, that hope for what was yet to come. And we read in Psalm 39, 7, But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. So it's, again, it's a reminder that God himself is where we find our hope and not in the things of the world that we are oftentimes facing and then in 1 Peter, again, after Christ, we are reminded and we are told by Peter of this important truth. And it's 1 Peter 1, 3 through 4. Praise be to the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish spoil or fade kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. So again, this is that uh, recognition or realization that our faith, excuse me, our hope is found in Christ and in Christ's promise that he will return and that we will recognize and be brought into uh, this eternity with him uh, through salvation. And that is a great, great promise that we, can, that we can find confidence in, that we can be kind of rooted in and grounded in. So one way that I, I kind of thought about it, just visually speaking, is that when I was about 10 years old, my parents and sister and I went to Walt Disney World, which seems to be a rite of passage at that, that age for some reason. And when we first got there, uh, for anyone who has been to Walt Disney World, you know how, um, how chaotic it can be. There's all sorts of activity going on. There's all sorts of kind of visual stuff going on. All of your senses, for the most part, are being um, impacted in some way or another and so it just felt like there was all this stuff going on in front of me but for whatever reason i'm not sure how my parents did it but they got me involved in these um, classes where i had the opportunity to see behind the scenes of the park itself and so i got to tour the offices i got to tour the underground tunnels i got to really see behind the scenes of all the things that were going on. I got to meet some of the animators. I got to meet some of the other staff and officials who were part of both Walt Disney World and also part of the production team for, um, for the movies and, and all that kind of stuff. And so I got a different view of what was happening. Again, a behind the scenes view of what was going on in the park. And in a lot of ways, through Christ, you and I are given a glimpse of that behind the scenes view of the world. And so even though all of these kind of chaotic things, all of this stuff is swirling around us and that we're just kind of being assaulted and being um, overwhelmed by so many different things, we can also recognize that there is something greater going on. Um, at the root of it, that God has a plan that is greater than what is happening right in front of us. You and I have the ability to both see in the here and now, the very present, but also be able to kind of rise above our circumstances and see the long range view that God has for us and for the world. This redemptive view, this 
eternal view of what is yet to come. And so that is what it means for us to have hope in Christ, that we are no longer kind of pushed from this place to the other place, that we're not being kind of rocked back and forth based on the things that are happening to us, but that you and I can find something that is stronger than that. I'm reminded of the um, story of Jesus in the boat with his disciples when a storm comes out of nowhere and he's off taking a nap, which I think is so amazing that someone who is both fully God and fully human decides to take a nap. I think there's probably a message in that itself. But what, what happens is that uh, Jesus is with his disciples on this, this boat and the storm come, seemingly comes out of nowhere and they're all afraid and they call to Jesus and he quiets the storm. And isn't that what you and I can do? We can call to Christ, that we can call on our faith in Christ and that we can experience the storms of life and yet we can also experience the calmness that comes from Christ when he is able to quiet those storms in our lives. When we call on him, we don't do it ourselves, but we actually call on Christ. And that is the hope that we find in our Savior, the hope that we find in Jesus, the hope that we find in the light of the world. So when things seem at their darkest, turn to God Turn to Jesus, turn to the light of the world. And so that's all I had for today. That's all I wanted to say about hope, at least at this point. But what I would encourage you to do is to uh, explore for yourself, to study for yourself, to ask yourself the question, where am I finding my hope? Where am I deriving my strength? Where am I going to when things are at their darkest, when things are at their most chaotic? Am I allowing those things to influence me in a way where I am being thrown this way and that? Or am I going to Christ and being reminded of his steadfastness, of his faithfulness, of his love for me that is never ending, that is all consuming? Is he at the center and the forefront? Is he the focus of my faith? And that's the other thing about candles. They, when they're lit, you can't help but be drawn to them. And that is what we're encouraged to do. And so in this season of Advent, what I want to also encourage you to do is take time to reflect, to consider, to uh, maybe realize, to remember what it means to be a faithful follower of Christ, to have our faith in the person of Christ as opposed to just in the things that Christ does. What does it mean to have that faithful relationship with Christ alone? And so I hope that this time has been beneficial to you. I hope it's been a blessing to you. I look forward to next week when we talk about faith and what that means for us in this time of Advent. So let me close our time in prayer. Father God, thank you for the reminder of what it means to have hope in you and you alone, to be reminded that even though these things in the world can come at us and come at us in many different directions, and that they can oftentimes feel very overwhelming. All we need to do, God, is, is simply let go and to surrender them all, all of these things to you, God. And it doesn't mean that we ignore them. It doesn't mean that we disregard them. It just simply means that we trust in you and that we trust in your faithfulness and your love for us, that you truly are who you say you are. And so, God, I pray that over the course of Advent, this season where we wait, where we celebrate the birth of Christ and we eagerly anticipate the second coming of Christ, that in this very special and holy time, 
we can we can slow down and we can reorient ourselves and our hearts and our minds onto you and what it means to be a father a child of God what it means to be a um, a follower of Christ and what it means for us to place our hope in you and you alone and it's all these things that we pray in your name amen so with that I encourage you if you haven't done so already to subscribe to our YouTube channel you'll be notified when a new study session comes available I encourage you to watch this video again and to um, really reflect and consider what it means to have hope in Christ and Christ alone. And I hope that it really encourages conversation and it gets you talking um, with yourself, but certainly with others and really exploring and discovering new things about God and about you and about your faith. And I really am grateful for you joining us today. And I pray that this season is a blessing to you and I look forward to next week when we meet again. God bless.